Take a load off. You take sugar? Oh, no. My neighbor across the hall is a diabetic, so I keep some of these around if you watch that sort of thing. Thank you. You don't have to. Um, you have something else you need to do. You want me to leave you alone? Is that it? No, I just don't want you to feel as though you need to. What? I just don't want to be in your way. Oh, you're not, particularly. <laughs> so, you having second thoughts? Is that it? What? No, I am. Um, no. You know, when I was first married, not to Joe, but to my first husband, Arthur, we'd been married maybe two or three weeks, and a woman shows up at our apartment with luggage. And Arthur said, oh, I forgot to tell you, before we got married, I promised her I'd take her away for a weekend. So I said, okay, and they left. I put my key on the piano, and I went home to my parents. And you <laughs> divorced him. Oh, no. At the end of the weekend, he came to my parents just begging and pleading. And I thought it was so funny that he had been so stupid that I went home with him. <laughs> that wasn't the last time he cheated. Of course not. <laughs> yeah, when we had been married six months, he oh, went to Hollywood. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, what was her name? She was rich, neurotic, ah, uh, Muriel. Yeah, he and Muriel went out to Hollywood to write a screenplay, and her father bankrolled them. He didn't send me a penny during that time. And, uh, well, you know, I guess they were having an affair. Because when he tried to end it, she threatened to kill herself. I know, it was a terrible, terrible mess. We were at the uh, Cafe Society, and uh, I guess they were back from California by then. She followed me into a cab, and she said to me, Vera, can't we be friends? Mm. It eats me up that you're so angry at me. <laughs> and I said, Muriel, there are people you like, and people you don't like, and I don't like you, and I want you out of my cab. Well, she just cried and carried on. This woman that had been sleeping with my husband for two years. And then there was the way Chrissy met from Kentucky. He said, uh, came home and he confessed to me that he was in love with her. And I said to him, Arthur, she's a hick. <laughs> got nothing in common. I'm sure the sex is great. But why don't you go spend a couple weeks with her and see if there's enough there for you to leave our marriage. And sure enough, he came back and he said, we ran out of things to talk about. <laughs> and that was that, you know. He was a drunk and a cheater, but I liked him till the day he died. I'm not sure what you're trying to tell me. <laughs> I'm just making conversation. <laughs> I not get much help from you. <laughs> but you're going on and on about these parables of tolerance and forgiveness, and you should have left him. Well, I did, eventually. Yeah, but you put up with it, and you tell these stories as if you're so proud of them. Okay, all right. This woman who you tried to push out of the cab, you should have been pushing him out of the cab, and she was coming to you for understanding. I see, I've struck a nerve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to forget him. Well, all right, all right. I'm sorry, I've just been really, and he's late. It's fucking late, I can't believe it. You know, I'm not trying to tell you whether you should forgive him or not forgive him. I really don't know what's best. That's your affair. All I know is that men, they sometimes do things. You have to remember, it's more out of stupidity than anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's 
not uh, what you would call malicious. It's just stupid and childish. <laughs> I guess um, I don't make allowances for those based on gender, and yes. I don't want anyone to make allowances for me, so I guess you think I'm very backward. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs>